Have you ever been working on a Xamarin Forms application and asked, why can't I have a dialogue that looks like it actually belongs in my application? In Prism 7.2, we introduced a new dialogue service to tackle this very problem. In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use the new dialogue service to develop dialogues using Xamarin Forms to have custom dialogues that do exactly what we need them to do for our specific app and that we have full control over to make them look like they actually belong in our app. This video is brought to you by my GitHub sponsors. To see more from the mobile build tools, Prism Library, and Prism plugins, or to see more Twitch streams and YouTube tutorials, be sure to sign up as a GitHub sponsor at zam.dev slash sponsordan. One of the first things you'll notice is I've created a dialogues folder. It's here that I'll create my view and my view model just for separation so I don't accidentally use these or get them confused for region navigation or partial views from Prism 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the base class declaration in my code behind because I'm using XAML compilation and this is going to get picked up automatically when I build. This will also let me change it from a content view in XAML to a stack layout without having to worry about my code behind. Later on, if I wanted to change this again, say to an absolute layout or a relative layout or a grid, I could do so without having to worry about any code behind that I might have. My view is going to be very simple. I simply have a label with a binding for a property called message and a button that I'll bind to a close command in my view model. Now let's go ahead and add a view model. Just like with any other view model that we might have, we're gonna go ahead and inherit from bindable base. But we're also going to implement the iDialogAware interface here, and that's what's gonna really make all of the magic happen. To start, let's actually look at the can close dialog. This just returns a bool to let us know whether or not we can close it. We're gonna return true here. We don't need to do anything right now for on dialog closed, and there's an on dialog opened that gets parameters, and we'll come back to this in a second. We just need to go ahead and add our properties and then a constructor so we can go ahead and initialize our delegate command. We're gonna go ahead and keep this very simple, passing in a Lambda expression to invoke our request close. We don't need to actually pass any parameters back yet, so we'll just pass in a null instead. Now let's look at our on dialog opened. You'll see that we have the iDialog parameters. These should remind you a lot about iNavigation parameters as they share a common API. We can go ahead and set our message property here by calling the getValue method. Now let's go ahead and open up our Prism application and update our register types. We'll see here that container registry has an extension for register dialog. Just like register for navigation, we can pass in the view type and the view model type. We can also pass in a specific name if we want to override the default for using the type name. Now, of course, to this point, we've spent all of our time and energy building a dialogue. Admittedly, for this sample, it may not be the most beautiful dialogue because we're just showing a label with some sort of message and we have a button to close the dialogue. But it wouldn't be very practical if all we did was build a dialogue and not actually use it. So let's go ahead and wire up our main page view model to actually inject the iDialog service so that way we can use it to call on our sample dialogue. All we need to do is just say show dialog with our dialog name and we can pass in some dialog parameters. Here we'll go ahead and add a message with the message hello from main page view model. With our view model all wired up, let's go ahead and add a button to our main page so that way we can actually invoke the show dialog command that we added in our view model and actually see the dialog. With that, we're ready to go ahead and hit build and finally see our dialog in action. Now that our app is built, we can go ahead and see it for the first time. We'll hit show dialog and then our dialog will come up. We do see, however, that it had a transparent background because we didn't actually set anything. So why don't we go ahead and close it, come into our code here, and we'll edit our code in action using hot reload to go ahead and add a background color and we'll set that to white. Once that's actually set and reloaded, we can come back into our app, click show dialog, 
and there it is. We can clearly see the dialog plus our mask and the background. And that's how you use the new dialog service in Prism. Hey, Dan here. Hope you enjoyed another wonderful episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and like so I can keep bringing you even more great content.